Okay, we will start with interphase. Again, not part of mitosis. It's the uh, in-between meiotic divisions. And this is uh, the longest period of time. Um, most cells spend 90% of their time in this section. Uh, so only, you know, at any one time in your body, maybe 10% of the cells are dividing. And some of the cells don't really divide. And we'll talk about that a little bit with control. But um, so anyway, uh, what you want, what you want to know is the G1S and G2. Uh, G1 actually stands for first gap. When they first were looking at it, it didn't seem like a lot was going on. And it turns out it was, there is, uh, this is where growth happens. Uh, this is where protein synthesis happens. Uh, and so quite a, quite a bit is going on there. Um, and then the next one is S and that stands for DNA replication, but it stands for synthesis. This is where the second amount of DNA comes up for the extra chromosome before division or the new chromosome for the new cell. And then G2 is the other gap. It's the gap afterwards. And this is the, called the second gap. Uh, also growth protein um, synthesis. Um, also, this is where the organelles will be replicating and, and we're trying to increase the amount and things like that. And then uh, what's important is centrosome swarm, uh, arranging the microtubules, especially in animal cells and the centrioles uh, with asters. Uh, and so again, a centriole is um, part of that centrosome area. Uh, it's a bunch of microtubules, and then the asters are actually little 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 things that stick out. Aster means star, um, and so they stick out side the um, the centrioles and allows for spindle fibers to attach. And we'll talk about that later. So this, this is, uh, these are uh, replicating themselves also and they're starting to slowly move. Okay. Uh, the next thing we want to talk about then is um, prophase. And prophase would, would in mitosis then be the longest phase of the uh, M phase uh, of mitosis. Uh, here the chromatin condense into chromosomes. So now we're starting to see those chromosomes uh, the nucleoli, uh, the, uh, we talked about the nucleolus, uh, the things with RNA, they disappear. Uh, you cannot physically see them anymore. Uh, the cr chromosomes are made up of two cro chromatids with their centromeres. And then the meiotic spindle form, which has the centrioles with asters. And then you get these microtubules that extend between the centrioles, um, which is often called um, spindle apparatus. Okay, so all of that is starting to form. It's, it's really kind of a, a, a way because we're gonna pull these um, chromosomes apart. Okay, pro-metaphase, this is uh, newer and it's not that new, it's been around for 15 years or so, but um, uh, they have broken this up um, into another phase. Uh, they know more details about it. So this is where the chromosomes condense even more. Um, you can see them here. Uh, you can really see them here. They're very, very distinct. Uh, and then this is represented by the nuclear membrane begins to fragment. And so you don't see the, uh, the nuclear membrane anymore. Uh, the kinetochores form. And the kinetochores are coming off of the um, center marks. Um, and what you end up with is the specialized protein structures that are attached and the kinetic cores. Uh, there are kinetic core microtubules that kind of jerk back and forth. And then there are non kinetic core microtubules that actually are stretching the cell. So they're doing slightly different things, but the whole, the whole purpose is we're going to, we need to pull these sister chromatids apart. All right, the next phase is metaphase. Meta means middle. Uh, the centrosomes are now at opposite poles. Again, the centrosomes are centrioles with their uh, asters. Uh, the chromosomes line up on the metaphase plate. So they all, and this is an imaginary line right in the middle of uh, between the two uh, centrosomes. Uh, each sister chromatid is attached to a kinetochore, uh, microtubules coming from opposite poles. So 
So again, the centromere area um, is where the kinetochores are attached. And again, what we're trying to do is build this structure that's all one kind of one piece uh, that when these microtubes actually um, shorten, um, it allows uh, the chromosomes to be pulled apart. All right, anaphase. This is where the whole thing comes apart. So um, what happens is if you go back to what a chromosome looks like with, with um, um, the two sister chromatids, the chromatids are all kind of stuck together all the way down the line. And so what happens is they have these cohesion, uh, cohesin proteins uh, that, are, that are making these things sticky and hold together. Well, that is all um, cleaved. So now the chromosomes can be pulled apart. And this is where things get a little um, funky uh, because what happens in metaphase, you end up, okay, so if you have a cell that has like four chromosomes, when it replicates itself, when the DNA replicates for, meta, for, for mitosis, those cells still have four chromosomes. It hasn't changed. But what has changed is each chromosome is now made up of two chromatids. And what has changed is the amount of DNA. It's doubled. So going into um, metaphase, you technically, if it, again, if you have an organism that has four chromosomes, you still have an organism with four chromosomes and eight chromatids. Okay. Uh, when you hit anaphase, this is where it gets a little bit confusing because technically now you have double the amount of chromosomes. You have eight. And so this is another thing that confuses people. What I have here is I've got two uh, sister chromatids held together, right? Um, um, the cohesion proteins are cleave, so it's still held together by the centromeres. Well, then when this thing is pulled apart, okay, again, one chromosome, two chromatids. But when this thing is pulled apart, now all of a sudden I have two chromosomes. Uh, they're called daughter chromosomes, and they're only made up of a single unit, okay, so made up of no chromatids. And so that's where it gets a little tricky, because actually the chromosome num number technically has doubled uh, for a short period of time. All right, the next one, telophase is really the reverse of prophase. The nuclei reappear, so that membrane gets rebuilt. The nucleoli reappear, um, and so they show back up. The chromosomes are uh, uh, uncondensed in the chromatin, so you see them start to fall back apart. And then all the spindle fibers, the microtubules, and all those things disappear. Okay, why this is happening is where you're also getting um, cytokinesis. And so cytokinesis is what's happening, not to the nucleus anymore, that, that's the telophase part, but what's happening to the cell itself. And animal cells and plant cells do it in two different fashions. The animal cells uh, have what's called a cleavage furrow. And what happens is there is uh, actin microfilaments, actin is a uh, protein, and, um, and it's kind of like a ring and it just kind of starts to pinch. Um, they, they say like a duffel bag with a string. Um, uh, pinch in and that will pinch these two in half and then you'll end up with your two cells that are genetically identical to each other. Uh, in plant cells a little bit different. You have a cell wall, you have issues. Uh, you're, you're not going to be able to pinch in. So what actually happens is the Golgi apparatus will start produce have vesicles that start producing material to build a new um, uh, cell wall and that's called a cell plate. Okay, so cell plate is made by the Golgi apparatus which pushes out uh, vesicles uh, to form the new cell wall between the two. And so here we're looking at some of the different phases. So if you're looking at that cell there in the middle, we're, we're pretty much looking at interphase. You look at this next one. This is probably, could be prophase. I would argue this is protometaphase um, because you are seeing some of the nuclear membrane probably missing over here. So um, again, I will never ask you this on something like this. I, I'm just trying to show you, this is a continual process. Cells don't read the books. Uh, we're trying to make it easier for us. So what somebody says is lo a late prophase might be early proto-metaphase for somebody else. Um, so we're really looking for what's kind of happening uh, versus you know, trying, to, trying to play that game. Uh, this obviously is metaphase, okay? So you can see right down the middle. 
but here you can see the centrosomes. This would be the centriole with, uh, with the asters coming off. And then there's the spindle apparatus or uh, spindle fibers, you can see. And then on here, which you can't really see, but their attachment is by the protein kinetochores. So um, that's what you're looking at. And then, uh, so that was metaphase. This is anaphase. You can see it being pulled apart. And then here, we either got two brand new cells in different portions, or this could be telophase two cells with the um, with, with the uh, uh, you know it pinched in already. Um, hard hard to tell. Uh, but I got that out of a book. They said it was uh, two cells after telophase. So how the hell do I know? <laughs> okay, just just to give you an idea. So that will be it for this.